yeah, so this, this game um, is a jigsaw puzzle, but also an escape room game. So usually during these streams, I just do like chill, chill jigsaw puzzling, and it's very chill and calming and relaxed, but this is a escape room game, so it's going to be more stressful, I guess, maybe. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna be timing it, but I'm not gonna care too much about the time because I'll be like breaking it up in multiple days, so yeah. Anyway, this is the game. Um, <laughs> oh, so this is, I got paper and and pencils and scissors for, because you need that separately. Uh, so this is Exit the Sacred Temple. It's, an, if you've played an Exit game before, then you might be familiar with this decoder disc and it's an escape room type game. Um, there's nothing relaxing about making our escape, yeah. <laughs> This will not be as relaxing as the usual Jigsaw Puzzle stream. Um, but yeah, basically in this game, it's an escape room with, with a Jigsaw Puzzle. That's that's what I know. I read the rules and I forgot already like exactly how the code works, but we'll figure that out. These are, um, what are those called? R riddle documents. And so like, I think when, once we do like figure out the code answer, it's going to have like if this is the answer or something, it's, it has this star, L, and square, and then that's gonna be which one we open. Um, and yeah, and then there's four jigsaw puzzles. This is the one I start with. And then, um, yeah, I'll just read, read the story now. So, um, What's the game about? Late again, you raced through the corridors of the old university building. Your lecture about Indonesian temple sites was a huge success, but the professor will not be happy about your tardiness. Without knocking, you burst into the archaeology department office where you are confronted with a chaotic scene. Books strewn all over the place, drawers pulled out, chairs knocked over, and no trace of the professor. A glance at the open safe confirms your fears. Um, the rare old book about the hidden temple has been stolen. Just as you are reaching for the phone, you see a note. Don't try looking for me. What's going on? Oh no. What's going on? Um, hi, Salty Horse. Yeah, there is no deck of cards in this one. There's just these, these are booklets. I can't open them yet, but uh, they're, they're booklets. <laughs> so that's instead of the deck of cards. And then there's puzzles, which I guess is instead of the normal booklet thing. Um, there's hints in here too. There's a, if it turns this upside down, there's like a hint guide. So instead of hint cards, there's hints in the booklet. Yeah. Um, in a panic, you start looking for clues. Everything points to treasure hunters. They seem to have been looking specifically for the historic book. Just then you find four odd discs wrapped in parchment paper with a note under them showing coordinates written in your professor's handwriting. In a flash, you decode that you need to get to the hidden temple before the treasure hunters can find it. You take a chartered flight to a small volcanic island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. From there, the coordinates lead you to a mysterious clearing deep in the jungle. But the treasure hunters have beaten you to it. In the grass, you find a briefcase secured with a purple lock. Read through the rule. Okay. Yeah, so take the parchment paper. Parchment paper. Puzzle bag with the blue background with no pattern. That's this one. Start the timer. Assemble the pieces to reveal the mysterious clearing. So we gotta work, solve all the codes in time to be able to s save the professor and stop the treasure hunters. I probably won't do it in time. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna start my timer here. I'm just gonna have my phone. Um, I might have a short stream today and just do like the first one. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, let's start the timer. Uh, da, 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 da. And the way it's gonna work, this is gonna work for me. I'm gonna like do some of it today and then some of it tomorrow and I'll just add the times together because I'm not gonna like have my stopwatch still on the same thing <laughs> because I might use it for other things. Okay, ready, go, start timer. I don't have the timer showing on the screen, but it's currently at seven seconds, so. All right, I don't need that. All right, look at this. Oh, this is the jungle, right? That's what, I think each puzzle piece is 88, or each puzzle itself is 88 pieces. So there's four puzzles in here that are 88 pieces each. And it's an exit game, so I think that stuff is destructible. They say you might need scissors, so that means you can't 
replay it with other people. Um, yeah. Oh, also, I forgot to say, there's going to be spoilers. I forgot to put a spoiler warning, but um, yeah, the, this has spoilers for the game since I'm going to be doing this game. <laughs> I wonder if this is going to have weird edges like, like the other one. I should separate out the edge pieces. So I haven't done one of these exit puzzle ones before, but I did the last two weeks ago. I did the escape the room, or escape room the game, is that the company? And they had a puzzle one as well, and that was fun. But the, the puzzles weren't just rectangles, they were different. Which made, like, made it hard to start with the edge pieces. But I'll try starting with the edge pieces on this one, see what happens. So far, I think, like, it seems like, I think there were only four corners. Or I, I think I've only found three of them so far, so. Wait, there were there only three corners? I don't know. I might have found four. <laughs> In. <laughs> Yay! That's not an edge. What is that doing there? There's lots of butterflies. That must be something relevant to the puzzle, right? I think. That's a bone. Bone. Hmm. I think that goes there. Oh, that goes there. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Thanks for the sub crystal. <laughs> Can't watch since I don't want to spoil anything for myself. Yes. Uh, hi, Crystal. <laughs> I'm covering it up. Um, <laughs> yes, hi. <laughs> Actually, well, you, you can hear me without watching, yeah, so I, I don't have to cover it up. <laughs> so far, I like the puzzle quality better than the... Um, What's it called? The other one. <laughs> the escape the room. Escape. What, what's that? What's that company? Escape game the room. Exit the no. Escape the room. Escape room the game. I think. Oh, escape room the game. Right. Yeah. So that that's the other comparison I have right now. The only other comparison I have is that uh, because that's the only other escape room board game jigsaw puzzle that I've done. That's a pretty um, pretty specific category of, of things. Did I miss an edge piece? Here. There it is. But yeah, like these pieces are more unique. Whereas in the other one, they weren't, um, like you can see how the cuts are are more unique, like weird, weird looking stuff. So 
I, th I think every piece might be unique in this one, whereas in the other ones, some pieces would fit in other ones, but like the image is unique anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But I just like it when, when puzzles are completely unique. <laughs> so there's a lot of these numbers, like 3W, 7E, like the East or something, I don't know. But I feel like those would go together sim in, in this similar locations. Goes there, and there's a dark black line here, which is what I'm lining up here, kind of. That line, oh, that's it for that one. Okay, fine. And here's the, the chalk lines that are down here. So. Put this stuff out here. Um, <laughs> there's another bone. This goes there. This must go here. That goes there. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's that. These are all face up, huh? Probably. There's that. There's that. Hi, James. Oh, oh, Mubot is still. Whoops, I forgot to change Mubot. Let me. Um, get that. I'll just turn that off. Okay. I think that should be good. <laughs> All right. Now, now Mubat will not be saying things that aren't currently true. I mean, I guess Crystal and Coda could be playing Shablam with Aaron right now, just not on stream. And Crystal just said she's working from home, so she probably shouldn't be playing a game right now. Oh, I think I... I already turned it off, but yeah. <laughs> so it, sh it should it should be good right now, I think. Ooh, what's this? This is like a little book here. And there's yellow stuff here. So this goes somewhere. Um. Making Mubot say Shablam less is sad though. Oh, well, okay. Maybe we could like update Mubot to just say Shablam. <laughs> Every once in a while. Sweet. 
I fell asleep. <laughs> That's good. Um, oh, this goes here. That's what this is. Yay. That doesn't go there. This. Does this go here? Oh, there's like wires coming up. I don't know, I don't know what those are. I don't think I've ever done a puzzle without also having the image for reference. I'm interested in trying that. Yeah, I do it a lot. So um, having these escape puzzles where there's no image. <laughs> what was that? Okay, having these escape room puzzles where there's no image isn't like that big of a difference for me compared to normal puzzles because I normally don't use the reference. Um, but since these are made to do without a reference, then it's like a good way to start doing it without a reference if that's, if you want to try. <laughs> oh, this should be, okay, let's, let's go. Do the, the ground area, which is darker. This ground stuff. Let's get here. Nope. Oh, this is like lighter moss color. Whoops, this is upside down. Oh, there's that piece. I was looking for that piece. Where does this go? Does this go here? Yep, yep it does. Okay. That's nice. Where does this go? There's a... Aha, that goes with that. Because it's that blade. Where does it come from? It's nice having these little puzzles. I wonder if I should be zooming in right now. <laughs> now that I'm almost done with the puzzle. Um. curious if this puzzle style of X game feels more or less soloable than the standard ones. It's probably mo more so. Well, I guess we'll see how the actual puzzle parts go. Uh, well, I guess it depends if you like doing jigsaw puzzles solo or not. Because I like doing jigsaw puzzles solo. Uh, so I think that's a good solo activity. But like if people like doing jigsaw puzzles with a group, then 
I, I assume the jigsaw puzzle is going to be like the most time intensive part of of the thing. Um, oops. But I, yeah, I guess we'll see how the puzzle parts are. The, I mean, the, like the, what is it called? The riddle, riddle parts? Non-jigsaw puzzle, puzzle parts? <laughs> All right, so done with that jigsaw. Uh, the timer is at 16 minutes, okay. Um, all right, so, no, that's it. So yeah, now now I need to figure out, so wait, wait, let me look at the rules again. What am I supposed to do? I think, okay, so I'm gonna be, do, 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 solve the riddles. You'll come across locked objects and doors. There's small colored locks. Okay, so this has a blue lock. It said there was a bag, wait. Oh, oh, it says it's a purple lock, but that's totally, like, dark blue. Uh, what is, okay, I guess they call this color purple. I don't know, but it's, it's that color. So I'm going to be trying to open that lock um, by, by doing a clue. Okay, so um, let me try zooming in now. Whatever, I'm just, I'm not going to care much about the score, so I'm not going to, like, stop the time, but I'm going to... <laughs> um, let's, let's do a zoomed in screen of this. Do, do, do. <laughs> Here. So you can kind of see now? Is that better? I don't know. <laughs> I'll do a little bit more. Is that? Okay. So now you can see the, the puzzle. I think maybe, I um, but basically there, this is the lock. It has like a picture of a hand. Um, so it has okay. It has this image, the hand, and then this, this, and then the, the fishy hand thing. But there's a hand here, the image here. Th those images are here, here, and here. Um, let me see if I see them anywhere else. I see a bunch of butterflies. I see like three e five like numbers here. Um, but then on the hand, there's a pencil and a sword bone. And then here there's a pencil and a regular bone. And here's a pencil and it's like outlining the things. Interesting. Oh, do I have to? I'm going to have to like outline something. This Because this is tracing paper, right? So it wants me to outline these things. So this sword is all am i gonna have to like what do i do um the sword am i gonna have to outline all of these swords there's this sword this sword there's swords here and here there's a lot of swords i guess i'll try <laughs> outlining this i always like whenever i do in a uh, exit game and then you get to the destructible part, or like here, the this is kind of the destructible part since once I outline this, it, I can't undo it. Well, I can erase it, but like I always get nervous. So, um, but yeah, it's got got a picture. So I'm I'm lining up the hand and then trying to outline this. I don't know. Like how much of the swords I'm supposed to outline, like the hilt. I'm, I'm not doing like a super fancy job of it, but I think I got all the swords there. Okay, yeah, this is probably gonna show a number at the end. Okay, and then this one I do the bones. So, bones, here's a big bone here. Here's two little ones here. Um, here's a bone. 
Oh, is this a bone? This is a bone. Yep, they're, they're lining up. Okay. See? Like, I don't know if you can see. But it is lining up. And this one is these little statue things. So that's, this is kind of cool. So I line up the fishies and then outline all the little statue things, which is this one, <laughs> uh, this one, this one. Uh, make sure this is lined up well. Okay. I think this this one. Um, I think that was all of it. So this looks like four, seven, nine. Does that look like that to you? Can you see it? Okay. So then I'm going to do four, seven, nine. And like the way you check to see if it's right, you go here. And if it matches, that's purple. It's supposed to match the same color, but the, okay. I th yeah, that's purple. And this is blue. Like it said purple. So I assume that's trying to mean purple. The, the colors are slightly different, but I think it's supposed to be the same color. Also my head's cut off. <laughs> but okay <laughs> I should fix that <laughs> um, so yeah it's kind of weird that um, whoops not that yeah whatever it's good enough Okay, um, yeah, uh, so yeah, it's kind of weird that the, that the colors don't match, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And then I think I read from outside to in. Let me double check. Um, outside in. So I'm reading this L circle square. So I'm looking for that code here. This one. Oh, wait. <laughs> Here, let go. here, I found it here, all circle square. And then, um, yes, it says one, fantastic. You have opened the lock on the briefcase. You eagerly search through the briefcase. Inside you find all sorts of stuff that seems to have been crammed into it in a hurry. Between a headlamp and an old rag, you discover a map marked with strange numbers, letters, symbols, and coins. A red X marks the location, a passageway overgrown with moss and vines in front of which you are standing. Only now do you notice the gigantic statue with the gray lock. It almost seems to be guarding the passageway. Oh, I actually saw that earlier. Um, as you take another look at the map, you see a small note at the bottom right. Uh, isn't that the professor's handwriting? What on earth can it mean? Now take the riddle document with map written on it from the stack. Okay, there, there was one that said map and I'm like, that's not one of the clue things. Okay, so we get this. So this is the map. Oh gosh, so these match things here as well. In a side compartment of the case, you also find a photo with a bunch of butterflies, which I noticed here. Strange, it's almost as if they're being magically attracted to the passageway. Of course, using the old passageway and the butterflies, the map can certainly be deciphered. Um, okay. So I need to, okay, so on this map, it's got a grid uh, and it says one, catch all the butterflies and bring them home and bring is underlined. And then two, collect three coins, three, use code for gray lock. So the gray lock is here. Here's three coins. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that, there's loud noise outside. Like it's, oh, it might be the street sleeper or something. <laughs> okay. Um, so, the, the butterflies, so there's, there's, wait, um. So we're standing here at the red X, I think. So we want all the butterflies. And then, so wait, let's see. Are, is, does this correspond with here on the puzzle? Let's see. Because um, there's no butterflies on this map, but there's butterflies, the old. Attracted to the passageway. What's the passageway?
All right. So here it says, the butterflies seem to feel right at home in the old passageway, which I'm not sure what that means. Um, so there's, so do these numbers correspond, the 4n, is there a 4n here? No, I don't think so. Oh, there's a 3N here, so there's a 3N here. But other stuff is not really match. Okay, well there's a 3N here. There's a lot of 3Ns, what the heck? Okay. I don't know what those mean either. <laughs> but we might only want to pay attention to the butterflies now? I'm not sure. But we also want coins. We need three coins. So we're gonna need like the three coins and then that's the number of the lock. But we have to do something with the butterflies. So the, this butterfly is that one. This one is that one. This one is here. This one, where's that one? It's here, it's little. This one is there. This one is here, here, and this one's down there. That's an interesting looking butterfly. It's like a butterfly jellyfish. It's got like little blah, blah, blahs on it. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. <laughs> All the butterflies and bring them home. So this picture here is right here on the butterfly, like so they're supposed to be here, like here. So, oh, do they match up here with the two? So is this, okay. If this is, is overlapped here, I think, like that, then, then um, this butterfly is like here at two north. This one's at three west, maybe. Does that, I don't know if these numbers are, no, because the, it's hard to overlap the numbers, but like they're they're around here. So I don't know if I have to like bring this butterfly over here and this butterfly over here and this butterfly over there and this one here. I don't that doesn't seem to And what does that have to do with the map here? Hmm. <laughs> okay. And then I feel like these animals are going to be for a later riddle, probably. Catch, collect three coins. So I'm supposed to get the... Alright, so... If this map matches this, then I'm here. Then like, is this going that way? It's kind of hard to tell on this map. Yeah, because I can't like match up where the butterfly is on this map. Do you have a cube or a button to use as a move so you don't have to write on the sheet quite yet? Um, I should, I have so many print and play games. Where's the cube? Uh, here. I got a cube down here. I got a box of cubes. Boom. All right, so I'm here. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sure like how the butterflies map to the map. <laughs> so. So the, okay, the. This is guarding the, pa this is the passageway, right? Because it says the photo, 
the butterflies go to the passageway. So I think we want the butterflies to end up where they are in the photo, I think, which would be like this butterfly ends up going here. Wait, no, wait, where is that? <laughs> That's right here. Here? I think right here. This butterfly goes here and rotates. Did that have to rotate too? Which means, but I'm not sure how to like transfer that to the map itself because I don't know where the map goes. Like where, the map isn't the same size as the puzzle, it's smaller. So, um, it doesn't, doesn't overlap the same. Is this exactly the same stuff? I think this picture is also smaller. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to overlap that anyway. <sighs> mm. Hmm. Bring them home. And bring is underlined, which is interesting. Bring them home. I wonder if I should use a hint. Okay, so what happens if I like, okay, if I do just try to like draw lines from the butterflies, it'll be like here, here, there, it doesn't really make anything, does it? Hmm. Boop. Boop. Yeah, I don't know, that's just like a lot of lines. Do the butterflies map to the coordinates in the jigsaw? Oh, oh, because, the, oh, there's pieces, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> eight by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, let's try. Wait, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe if this is the top. <laughs> Uh, I imagine the booklet shows the butterflies in a different position than the jigsaw. Well, the booklet doesn't have the butterfly. Oh, you mean this booklet? Um, the blue is over 2N. The coordinates in the passageway. Oh, oh, this. I was trying to figure that out. So like this, this blue looked like it was 2N kind of, and then this was like maybe 1S, but then like this part I just, it was like right here, which is not on one of the, it's like right here, I think, which isn't really on a coordinate. And this one also is like right here, I think, which isn't a coordinate. Um, unless it's, and then also not all of these coordinates are here. There's a bunch of three N's, but like no one W, I think. So, but like they are each distinctly on a piece. So, and then would this, this looks like a grid as well. So it might be like, the, these pieces for the butterflies, they want to end up on these pieces. Um, but but it's not clear on here, like this grid goes to the end, so it's not clear where the edges are, which is kind of awkward. 
Because this is a, what did I say, 8 by 11, I think? 11, 8 by 11. And I am here, but I don't know where that is here. Like, would it start here then? And, and this is the middle, so then 2, 3, four. It's like this this is the end maybe here and here and then it goes up eight like that is that <laughs> maybe and then so like this is the bottom left butterfly um, okay the text on the map one, catch all the butterflies and bring them home. Bring is underlined. Two, collect three coins. Three, use code for gray lock. Need more. Okay, so if... I feel like that. So if this butterfly is here and needs to go here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Is that right? No, it's six. We go one, two. It needs to go there or something. I don't know if that does anything. Hmm. Yeah, bring probably means to move them into the passageway where they feel at home. Yeah, so I was thinking like we need to move them from here into this picture, right? Because the picture means... And here, yeah, it says... It's almost as if they're being magically attracted to the passageway. Of course, using the old passageway and the butterflies, the map can certainly be deciphered. So, if I'm using the grid of the puzzle pieces, the blue butterfly goes over four. Maybe I just follow, do each butterfly in order. So if the blue goes over four, then I would go over four. I get number eight. <laughs> and then the green one goes one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Nope, that's that's too far over. <laughs> There's no room for that. Never mind. Um, um, the map riddle yields three symbols for the wheel. Yes. Well, I think the three symbols are going to be the coins because they're num they're numbers. Uh, they're numbers, not symbols. So it says collect three coins, and so each of these coins has numbers on it. So I think. When, when I land on the coins, um, it will, that's the number I'm going to be. Um, <laughs> I'm working lurking, so I have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Um. <laughs> I might end up doing a hint, see how the hint system works. Which I totally remember how it works from reading the instructions. I'm totally not looking at the instructions right now to see how to do the hints. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, it's just in the, in the booklet. <laughs> All right. What do you think? Should I d use a hint? I feel like we, we have some idea of what we want. Hi, Duchess, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I'm doing, there's spoilers here. I'm doing the exit, the game, uh, the sacred temple, exit the game with jigsaw puzzle. So I did the jigsaw puzzle part and now I'm doing one of the puzzles or try, attempting one of the puzzle parts. <laughs> and so I guess, yeah, this would work with multiple people similarly to an exit game. So far, it seems like. Um, 
So far I like it. I'm stuck on this this puzzle though, but like yeah, the, the jigsaw puzzle part was good. Uh, the quality of the puzzle is good. All the pieces were unique, I think, as far as I can tell. So that was nice. Uh, and like it's pretty decent. This is the thickness. <laughs> pretty good. Let's see, does it, it doesn't, let's see, does it do the pickup test? <laughs> the, okay, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it falls apart some when you pick it up, but like you can move it, you can slide it easily. <laughs> the teal butterfly is four pieces to the left of its intended position. Does that target piece only have two N written on it? Yes, it does. But then the two ends are like over here on the map, which is weird. But then for all of the others, the intended position. Also, the intended position of the teal is like a little bit on the border. I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know if the, these numbers, I feel like these numbers don't go with this puzzle they're going to go with a different puzzle. And I think the animals are also going to go with a different puzzle. Um, so I'm not sure how to get the butterflies onto this map other than the grid, but then the grid, I'm not sure like how that works. So I'm thinking of doing a hint. Yes. So like the way the hint works is there's a hint system on the back here. This is why I get to show you the hint system. That's, that's yeah. yeah, that's, that's why. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know I'm doing the gray lock. So then I go um, to get to the gray lock, I want to go to number three, page three. So I find the right clue page. Um, and then there's a first and a second clue. And then there's also a solution. So I'm not looking at this one. I'm looking at this one. Uh, clues for opening the stone statue. So I can read the first clue. Uh, follow the three steps described in Riddle Document 2, which is what we're trying to do. In the photo, the butterflies appear to feel right at home in the passageway. In the puzzle, however, they're in a completely different location. Take the first step, literally. Capture the butterflies in the puzzle and place them in the proper orientation in the puzzle passageway. Pay attention to the photo as you do that. You will need Riddle Documents. Oh! Oh, I think we need to literally change the puzzle. All right, so I'm using this hint. You have to mark off, so you mark off if you, if it, the hint gave you new information. Um, <laughs> sorry, don't, don't read that other part. But yeah, I, so I marked that. So I think you actually like literally take this and put it here. And, and that's interesting. Maybe, wait, this is still like that? Is that like that? Maybe? <laughs> this doesn't match up. Does, or does it? Let's go like that. Okay, so those kind of matched up. Uh, there, catch all the butterflies and bring them home. Collect three coins. Use code for gray lock. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I got the butterflies, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, is this... It doesn't seem, these don't match either. Okay, oh, oh, do I put this like, oh, oh, they, they open up, they show something. So if this is here, oh God. okay, this is like right here, this is here, like that. Okay, so there's three E, so there's one S, three N, and three E showing. So one S. What is that? 
Do I do that like 1s, 3n, and 3e? No, that doesn't seem to. <laughs> Okay, these these are three n, those are three n. I don't see three e or one s. Um, start from top. Three e is first, top to bottom, left to right. Oh, so three e, one, two, three. Then one s, and then three n. Wait, that doesn't. Am I supposed to be moving this? But yeah, the, the actual physically taking out of that, that kind of reminds me of the Ravensburger exit puzzles, except these are, in the Ravensburger, the edge pieces are all like the same shape, but these are different. So that was pretty cool, how they have an opening here. Um, okay, so top to bottom, left to right, 3E, Wait, what, what are you, I'm not sure. Am I supposed to be going that direction or finding 3E here? Collect three coins. Are the coins 3E, 1S, and 3N? Is that what the coins are? Oh, start at the end of the foot. There's a three. Three E. But the thing was one south and three north cancel out each other. Kind of. Well, not. They just make it be two north. But. Which I guess is a thing. Two north, two north. But. What does it say we are in? Small note, wait. Okay, so the red X is the passageway overgrown with moss and vines in front of which you are standing. So this is the passageway. Does that mean we're standing down below it? Or? Because we're... Maybe these coins are just fake. <laughs> no, um, one south. Okay, I'm gonna write down this one S. 3 and, oh wait, but, but the orientation might matter, huh? Like, there's one S, and then 3 E is over here, and 3 N is here, and it's like... That's where they are, okay. I'm trying to reverse the bathroom coins and it doesn't make sense either. Yeah, I don't know. So maybe should I like be putting this over the coins too to see? <laughs> I'm not sure. Or is it just like, is it just one, three, three? Well, that, I don't know which one would be first thing, so. Step two on the map is collect three coins. Three. 
and in 3e. Um, is x where we start or is x where we end up? So x, it says, is marks the location of a passageway overgrown with moss and vines in front of which you are standing. So it's in front of where we're standing. I think X is, X is the passageway, so that's this area, I guess. Um, the animals are important. Maybe start from snake on teal butterfly. Well, I don't know. I thought maybe the animals would be for a later thing, but because I don't know what to do for the... Oh, because, yeah, this one does. Okay, oh, because there's snake, elephant, and chimp. Huh, yeah, okay. So snake has... Oh, maybe these will also line up. Is there a snake, elephant, and monkey in, in that orientation somewhere? Like, like this one? Like that? Or monkey, elephant, <laughs> snake... No, it's too far away. No, they put this back. <laughs> From bottom left snake, one S lands on E, on 8E. No, that's true. And you move 8E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3 north, 1, 2, 3. Oh, and then... That one go you go three e, one two, three. So that's nine. Well, the cube the cube did not come with the game. I just got that cube out. So if we started snake, then we got a nine. Oh, should I try all of them? All of the snakes? Maybe I'm gonna try all of the snakes. Okay, so that's. Try all of the animals, okay. One S, okay, that doesn't help. So the other S's don't don't work. <laughs> they just stop, so if I keep trying this, this three E, that doesn't work. Elephant, one, two, nope. That one I already got, okay. Oh, <laughs> three north, one, two, three. Okay, this is four west, one, four, five south, one, two, three, four, five. Snake is one south, two, three, Wait, that's the same. It gets ends up at the nine as well. <laughs> and then this is just three south. Okay, no, they all just ended up at the nine. If we follow the one south for each of them, nine, nine, nine. Well, no, but, that, but it was actually only two that ended up at the nine. <laughs> what if, okay, what if I start from here? One, two, three, four. And the monkey goes three north, three, and then, oh, oh, but I pass through. Okay, if I start here, that's what I do. I start at the X. I go four up because there's the footsteps, the monkey. The monkey is three north. So then, but I pass this three. I kind of ignored the, the points that I passed. So that's a three. Um... It's going to end up at 9, though. 4 west, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 south, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The snake, snake is what? 1 south, 2. I pass, I pass the 7, and then I end up on the 9. I just ignored the coins that I passed. It, okay, it's got to be that. Um, 3, 7, 9. <laughs> because, yeah, if I'm passing coins, I'm collecting them, too. I don't just have to land on them, right? I know how video games work. Three, seven, nine. Yes, that's the gray lock. So um, I'm looking for this Y, a diamond, and a square. That's here. In Krubo, you have to stop to collect stuff. Oh, well, this is clearly not Karuba. <laughs> Yay, you decoded the map. Unbelievable, yep, un unbelievable. <laughs> that took a while. What are we at now? 55 minutes, oof. You climb cautiously onto the gigantic statue with the gray lock. After another daredevil maneuver, you have entered the code. You hear a soft click and the muzzle of the monster opens. Out falls a copy of an old map. 
you recognize it right away. It leads you straight to the temple. Now is your opportunity to make up for lost time. Oh, we gotta make up for lost time, yay. With renewed energy, you hack your way through the jungle, although the scorching heat prevents rapid progress. After some time, you hear the splash of water, a lot of water. The eager anticipation of some cool refreshment puts a spring in your step. You're almost there when you see between the trees that you are coming to a ravine with giant waterfalls cascading into the depths before you. A little lower down, a narrow bridge leads to the other side of the ravine. Now take the puzzle bag containing the pieces with stripes on the back, which is this one, it's got stripes, and compose the picture of the ravine, then continue reading. Um, so I guess we don't need this one anymore. I don't know, I'm just gonna push this off to the side. Um, and then we can do this puzzle. We might not need this anymore either, I'm not sure. Okay, I'll put the cube back in my cube box. Yay! Okay. Um, and then like once it says, the, the, once I do the ravine, it says just as you're about to follow the path down, you see an old book to your right. Is that the stolen book? It's secured with a red lock. Something appears to be lying on top of it. You take a closer look. So we'll have to do the puzzle first for that. Um, but that might be a stopping point because it sounds like I'm not sure. Someone might not be sleeping well. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's a, uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, okay, so this is where we're at. We've got one puzzle done. I should probably pause it. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like sleeping, you're right. Um, okay, so I did 57 minutes. I'm gonna write that down. 57, 50, that, that was day one. Um, and then I'll, I'll we'll continue tomorrow <laughs> and I'll just start doing some more jigsaw puzzling. So, so far for the first puzzle, it was like a generic, uh, a normal type puzzle with, with edge pieces that are normal. Um, so, or like, like a normal normal shape rectangle. So I'm gonna continue this the normal method of solving a puzzle of doing edges first. Uh, okay, you can see this, right? Yes. Here's corners, edges, corner, corner. Do, 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 do. More. We don't need that showing. Let's see. There's another edge. Ah, it's stuck. Okay. There. <laughs> so I, I think I found four corners and possibly all the edges. Yeah, I don't know. We got it all there. So, time to do the puzzle part. That's not there. This goes there. Oops. This must go here. This probably goes here. Okay. Like that. This goes here because it's yellow. Uh -huh. <laughs> That is that color. Hi, Salty Horse, how are you doing? I am doing this Exit the Game, the Sacred Temple, which is a jigsaw puzzle slash escape room game. Um, this is a different puzzle, it looks a lot like the first one. Yes, this is a different one. So the backs, uh, are striped, so the, the backs of each puzzle is different. So the first one was just um, plain black, so you can tell tell what they are. But yeah, yeah, it's it's also. I mean, I guess the whole time we're going to be in this jungle thing, so it's going to be similar looking scenes, I think, probably. Um, and I'll, after I finish the puzzle, I can zoom out so you can see the first one too. Uh,
Whoops. That doesn't go there. Whoops. Does that go there? No. Let's go here. That goes there. Aha. Does that go there? Yes, yes it does. That looks like it goes there, and then let's rotate some more, or like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I did. I missed some <laughs> edge pieces there. That's better. Okay, and then uh, here, here's another one that I missed. <laughs> Do you think it's the same die cut for all jigsaws? I was I was wondering that, and I was gonna check. Um, once I get this, I think this is upside down. Let me. Rotate it again. Um, let's look, it looks like it is the same die cut. So okay, look. <laughs> this is the other one, and I just took out the corner and like put it in there. It looks like it's the same die cut for. Yeah. So that's interesting. I wonder if that's gonna be like yeah. I wonder if um, we'll be combining them. Because so far, unlike the other Jigsaw Puzzle Escape Room game that I've done, which is the only thing I have to compare it to, it was a different brand. But that one, it, the Jigsaw Puzzle, like just once you put it together, that's it. You don't do anything else with the Jigsaw Puzzle. It's just there to be pretty. <laughs> Not like... Uh, but then the jigsaw puzzle itself was more difficult to put together. Although I guess with this, if since the die cuts are the same, I could just like find the matching piece on the other puzzle to know where it goes. But that probably takes longer than just doing it, right? I'm not sure. Um, This is the Inca and Marcus brand. Yes, this one is Inca and Marcus brand brand. <laughs> um, the other one was Escape Room the Game. Is that what it's called? Um, which is the brand that has, that's like more mass market and um, has, in the regular Escape Room games, they have, uh, uh, what's it called? A device that you put little keys into? Like a physical device? But their puzzle, you didn't need that, it wasn't. It was a standalone. Oh, here's another lock here, so that's going to be a different puzzle. Oops. Yeah, giant plastic box. That one. But yeah, with that one, the puzzles were not rectangular. Were not completely rectangular, so it was 
Um, but then also the pieces weren't as uniquely cut. Like each, this die cut, each of the pieces are pretty unique. Um, like see how it's not perfectly grid, like here's a little angle here and like this is bigger, stuff like that. Whereas with the other, with the other one, it was like some pieces could fit in multiple places, but the picture's unique enough that it's still like, it's still easy to do the puzzle. Not like uh, that other puzzle that I did that was really hard and then I did not like it. But it's cool how this one used the puzzle so far, or used the fact that it's a puzzle. It's pretty neat. I wonder how the other one is, because there's two puzzles so far, I think. Two exit puzzles. Um, hi, board game dads! How are you doing? I'm currently doing an exit route escape room game with a jigsaw puzzle. So there are spoilers. Um, yeah, there are spoilers for this game. Oh, there's a lot of locks in this one, I think. This looks like a red lock, and there's a gray lock and a green lock. Oh wait, we already, okay, the red lock is the one that we know about. And there's other locks. Yes, this is cool. So there's four jigsaw puzzles in here. I, I'm on the second one now. And then each puzzle, I think, has multiple uh, other puzzles. So if you look here, these are all like answer booklet, hint booklets. This is the one that I'm currently on. And then when I solve a puzzle, it'll give me another code to open another one and it like continues the story. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it goes outside the box. It's not just look at this image you constructed. Yes, that that too. So yeah, like the <laughs> I keep trying to put that one there and it doesn't go there. Um, the exit the game one. That's that's what it's called, right? Exit the game. Uh, no, 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 not exit the game. The <laughs> that's this one. <laughs> Escape room in the game. Escape room in a box. What is the other brand called that we, I keep talking about? I'm impressed with how many ways the exit games integrate parts that are not just stuff in the box. Yes, it's true. Um, you have to think outside the puzzle. <laughs> no, but um, that other brand, it was just like, put the puzzle together and look at the pictures, which I also liked. It was fun, because I like doing puzzles. No, not unlock. Um, there was a, there another one. It's the one with the with the physical box where you put keys into it, and they had a puzzle. 
an escape room puzzle one that I did la two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think. But anyway, that one was more like the put, put puzzle piece together, then look at it, and that picture is, gives you clues. Whereas this one, it's not only the picture, sometimes you also use the fact that it's puzzle pieces. So it's like a mix between escape rooms and then like the Ravensburger escape puzzles, which are more jigsaw puzzles with a little bit of extra puzzle, escape room type puzzles at the end. Escape Room the Game. Okay, Puzzle Adventure, Secret of the Scientists. Yes, it's a, it had, I remember it had like two, um, two colons in the name. <laughs> it was a lot. Wait, am I, oh, there it is. I was like, where's, I'm missing a piece. <laughs> All right, what's, what's my time? 14 minutes, okay. Amazon adds more to the title. Jigsaw Puzzle and Escape Room Board Game for Adults and Teens. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, is there like another colon after the title with that? <laughs> okay, so here is this. Uh, so just as you're about to follow the path down, you see an old book to your right, that's this one. Is that the stolen book? It is secured with a red lock. So something's on top of it. What am I looking at on top of it? There's like a, a rubber band? No, I don't know what that is. There's the letter E here. This says T-H-R-E, so there's like three right there. I don't know what that means. There's some locks here, but I think we're supposed to do the red lock right now. Um, let's see. And each lock is a three-digit number, so we use this dial like in other exit games, if you've done other exit games. Um, so I, what I've noticed so far is there's these, these statues um, with, with their hands up and like red stuff on them. There's a lot of those. This bridge has different uh, symbols on it. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see it. Here, the, oh, this rock thing is in the shape of a six. This has little people and it says 15 there. Um, but I'm not sure what I'm connecting currently. Let's see. Is there a second page to the booklet? No. Uh, no. Did I have this first page recovered? Um, <laughs> there's this and this. So I, okay, let's, let's reread what we had done yesterday or like the beginning of the book. Okay, so I, we de decoded the map. You climb cautiously onto the gigantic statue with the gray lock. So that was back here. We were, we were over here and then we went through here and like got to, through the pass. Um, um, so blah, 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 straight to the temple. And then we're hacking through the jungle. There's lots of water. Oh yeah, and then you're coming to a ravine with giant waterfalls. Okay, so these are waterfalls. There's a narrow bridge. And then you see the book. It's a stolen book. Is it the stolen book? And it says something appears to be lying on top of it. You take a closer look. Uh, I think it's just talking about the lock. Is it just talking about the lock? Is that lock open? Um, okay, but then there's like locks here too. So I don't know if we're supposed to... Do one of these locks? I don't know. Um, well, what if we just try to do the green lock? Because the green lock here is on this sign that says it has an eye, a hand, and the flower, and those are the symbols on here, which, I don't know. I could like count how many of each there are. Are there red letters? I don't see red letters. The red is like the necklace and belt on these statues. So each of these statues have necklaces and belt on them that are red. It looks like there's five statues. 
Oh wait, there's one back there. Six, maybe? <laughs> oh, but then, okay, the statues are this, this image. Um, what's the red blob to the right of the green lock? That's a parrot. A scarlet macaw, I think. Okay, so over here, I can't see if, no, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like the, the people in this pose. That's, this, the statue is that pose. There's a big one, a medium one, and a small one. And then there's lines from each of it pointing to this, which says 15. Um, and I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> okay, but then, so with this sign on the green lock, there's one, five eyes, one, two, three, five hands and one, two, three, four, five flower things. I'm not sure what that means either. And then, yeah, there's a gray lock, which... Hmm. Top right jigsaw piece has a letter in it. Yeah, it looks like a hidden seven. Um, so, I think, wait, can you tell? I think that's a seven, right? Looks like a seven to me. But, if I'm trying to do all these hidden letters, there's a seven, a three, and a six, like how do I know which, what order it's in? Um, seven something adds to up to 15. Oh. Okay, seven, three, and six does not add up to 15. <laughs> um, I have a dumb question, what's the next color in the book? For the hint book, it's uh, red. So I think we're supposed to do red next. <laughs> and then there's the black one and then the green one. <laughs> um, each statue is associated with something big to small. Maybe. But the statue thing is by this black lock, so I feel like the statue might be with the black lock. Or maybe, I don't know, it could be part of, it could be like a combination of stuff. Um, and so like on this book itself, <laughs> this is what, oh, it looks the same in, in the picture. Okay, I'll, I'll show you the picture then here. So this is what the book itself looks like. Um, there's like a rubber band or something on it. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so the letters around this picture, T-H-R-E-E, -E, the, the scattered around is three. Um, and there's the seven here and the six here. But... I don't know what order that should be in if if those are the three numbers. Three, seven, six. Okay, three, seven, six is a thing. <laughs> what about three, six, seven? It could be. Nope, not three, six, seven. But how would I know? So uh, it could be three, seven, six. What about six, seven, three, maybe? Nope. <laughs> Not six, seven, three, or six, three, seven. Okay, so it could be three, seven, six, maybe. That's of those combinations. But I don't know how you're supposed to know that order other than like, it's kind of like that's first, then that, then that reading. 
left to right, <laughs> top to bottom. 763 did not work, I think. I think 376 might. Wait, let's, let's see. Does 376 exist here? Da da da. Okay, so 376 leads me to this. <laughs> oh, it is that. So it's 376. Um, um, I wonder how we were supposed to know the order. Should I look that up? I'm going to look it up. This doesn't count because I did get it, but I just... Uh, Oh, okay, so the stuff on the, the book, I guess, is a moss, a root, and a rock. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell that from the picture, but I guess that, that makes the order. Moss, root, rock. So the moss, the root, and the rocks. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't tell that from the picture that that was, I thought that was a rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, awesome. You have opened the red lock. Um, you carefully open the old book. To your horror, you see lots of loose pages and some that have even been ripped out. Oh no! They didn't take good care of the book. Your archaeologist's hearts are bleeding. The professor never would have allowed that. It gradually dawns on you that the professor never would have willingly joined the treasure hunters in their search for the temple. As you examine the pages carefully for the first time, you notice that a lot of things in the book were written in handwriting unfamiliar to you. Judging by the pictures, the book seems to contain an account of the downfall of the temple. One loose page in particular grabs your attention. It shows a sketch of several petroglyphs that seem awfully similar to the ones in the ravine. So these are the people with their hands up. See? Uh, can you see? Yeah, and they have numbers. So this might be like the those need to add up to 15 type thing, maybe? Because let's see, do these match places? Um, yeah, they kind of match up with, with uh, where these ones are. So adding up to 15, we have 6, 8, 2, 4, 3, and 0. Um, uh, Eight, four, and three add up to fifteen. Is that it? Yeah, so I think eight, four, and three. Um, oh, bye, board game dads. Thanks for stopping by. I wonder if I have to put the dudes from the puzzle onto the page. I'm thinking it's just the numbers this time. Because, like, this one's 8, 4, 3. Like, I'm just going to try 8, 4, 3. And it, it's big, medium, small. But, like, this one's big, this one's medium, and that one's the smallest, right? Just, like, because of perspective. So then it would be, like, 4, 3, 8, maybe? That's, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so let's see if that's correct. Okay, so it does show the black lock. Um, hi Dutch Yoda, how are you doing? And then it's YY hexagon, which is here, yay! Yay, great, you have opened the black lock on the rock. But what now? You push against the rock from all sides. Mm but nothing happens. After several increasingly desperate attempts, one of you jokingly presses the belly of one of the engraved petroglyphs. Sure, why not? All of a sudden, a secret compartment springs open, but it's empty. Just as you're about to turn away in disappointment, you notice a small drawing of the old wooden bridge in the corner of the compartment. Is it from the treasure hunters or maybe the professor himself? You feel confused. Could the drawing help you cross the old bridge or is it a trap? Then a parrot screeches right next to you. Green lock, open the box, green lock. Aha, a clue. <laughs> to find out which boards you can step on safely, you will first have to use this drawing to crack the code of the green lock. Oh, okay, so, oh gosh. So there's a scissors for this one, which I have here. Bum bum. 
I'm gonna have to cut this. So this is an exit game, so it's not reusable, which is unfortunate because it's like puzzles and stuff. Um, I guess you can just like do the puzzles again though. Although they're they're pretty simple puzzles. <laughs> so Ooh, but since they have the same die cut, you could like make art out of the puzzles. Like once I saw someone I think showed me a while ago that some some link to some artist that made found old puzzles with the same die cut and they had like different puzzles like one was an image of a cat or something and then one was like a train and then they put it together so it was like the train with the cat head as the puzzle um which is pretty neat okay so three four five okay so one was cut two is Does this mean fold or I think this means fold, right? Not just flip over because then it has cut here. So I think we're supposed to fold here. Um, for two. And then three is fold this way. No, it must be this way. Right. Two is fold down this way. This three is fold this way. And then now four, we cut these things. And then five is fold open. Yes. Okay. Yay, arts and crafts. <laughs> okay. So now, I guess... This is the bird, so this is where we start. So that this probably means that these these ones aren't safe, the ones where that are open. Okay, there now you can see which ones are. Like, so I think this is where the start is because there's bird poop and a feather. <laughs> so like this eye is safe, this flower is safe, not these two, that flower is safe, not that one, the eye is safe. Not that one. That flower is safe. Not those two, the eye, and then the flower. And then I guess we just count how many are safe, maybe, I think? Which I should have been keeping track of that as I went across, but let's write right down. Okay, so I flower, do do do, one, two. Another flower is here. Not the hand, another eye. Not the eye, the flower. Not those two hands, an eye. Not that eye, and then the flower. So that's how many eyes? One, two, three eyes, zero hands, and four flowers. Three zero four. Let's try that on green. Three zero four. It's a green lock, so that does moon, uh, triangle, star thing. So that's wait, moon. Oh, moon, star, triangle. <laughs> yeah, that's this one. Yay! Thank God, the code from the bridge opens the green lock. Yay! So, move this over there. 
Inside the little box, you find an old piece of paper with a sketch showing you how to cross the bridge. Um, on its back, you discover some odd lanterns. Does this sheet belong to the book? It can't be a coincidence. So that's over here. You carefully insert it and cross the rickety bridge. A little later, your path starts to steepen. As you arrive at the top, you can hardly believe your eyes. You've done it. You see a vast temple site before you. How could it have remained hidden for so long? Take the puzzle bag containing the pieces with circles on the backs. Yay! Compose the picture of the temple elevation, then continue reading. Okay, so I'm gonna move this off to the side as well. Oops. Boop, boop, boop. Yay! So, yeah, the, since I cut this, it's no longer gonna be replayable. Yeah, this did look a lot faster than last time. <laughs> but yeah, for that one, like, you probably didn't really need to cut that because it's just showing you which ones are open. Um, like, that wasn't much of a puzzle part that was just doing origami and cutting it where it says to cut. So I feel like that's making that um, one time use was is kind of unnecessary for that part. <laughs> but oh well. The tracing paper part for the first puzzle was used up though. Yeah, so that, what is the time so far for this puzzle? 34 minutes now for, th for this one, <laughs> for today. Because yesterday's puzzle was, I only got through one puzzle, but I got really stuck on one of them, so. Why am I moving these up here? The marketing department deemed it necessary. Because <laughs> exit puzzles, you, you have to destroy things, right? You can't reuse them. That's the whole thing about exit puzzles. But I like passing on escape room type games to other people. Like with the other, the escape room, the game, the puzzle, secret scientist one. <laughs> um, that one I, I gave to my parents to, so they can enjoy it. Because it was, that one wasn't, wasn't a consumed one. Hmm. <laughs> Oops. There's lots of letters on this one. I'm like... Interesting. Whoops. <laughs> Where's the other corner? <laughs> oh, it's over here. <laughs> I 
There we go. That does go there? Okay. Um, and I missed an edge piece again. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yep, there, got it. And then these are all yellowish. Okay, here's the sky. Little bright things. Street, wait, or like, are these like street lights or lanterns or something? Maybe those are birds. It's getting yellow around here. So this all this stuff is gonna go there. Whoops, this is upside down. Boop. Boop. Greenish stuff goes around there. This goes here. Does this go there? Yep. This must go somewhere here. Nope. Let's go here. Oh, there. And this. feels this one feels easier than the other ones I'm getting used to the die cut <laughs> no no like the the colors made more sense <laughs> there was more difference because there was like the blue sky and then the yellow like distinct more distinct colors I guess
Is this lava? Like, what is this? do it blindfolded no <laughs> that then that would definitely get a lot fewer stars hi rock um watch the last one be inside where it's all green again yeah it's gonna be inside the building yeah it's gonna be no it's gonna be like all gray that's that's worse <laughs> um okay so now we can continue reading as you examine the vista around you more closely, you quickly notice that it won't be so easy to get inside the temple. Its door is securely locked, and the treasure hunters seem to have beaten you to it. You see boxes all over the place, and there's a campfire still smoldering. Oh, that's a campfire, not lava. Okay. <laughs> then you notice a little temple secured with a yellow lock. Uh, that's there. You look around for clues. Just as you touch an engraved lantern, various other lanterns light up. Oh, hold on. Haven't you seen them before? You hastily pull out the old piece of paper, which, yeah. You saw that a long time ago, not really, just now. Okay, so it says, what must be removed? One equals, the. so we cross out those ones, like all of them. So if those are gone, oh, is it gonna like make a number? If, if these, all of these are gone, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so if all of these and these ones are gone, then it just leaves these ones, which, I don't know what that looks like. Wait. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. The, these ones, and this one, this one, those ones are all gone. Which means it's like... Whoop. <sighs> I'm not sure, okay. To, is it supposed to like make the shape of a number or maybe something else? Let me see. Two removes all of these and then three removes these, this, and all of those. So, okay. <laughs> I wonder if I count all of the lanterns or... This must be removed. Yeah, do it one at a time. So if we remove these ones, then what is left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that, that's more than a single digit. So it can't be, it's not counting them. Um, but okay, so maybe it does end up doing, count them by type. Okay, so there's there's three of these poofs. Okay, let's, <laughs> let me get some paper. Okay, so the, the poof, there's three of those. This, that one, there's one, two, three, four of those. Uh, this one, the hot air balloon one, there's one, wait, is there only one of those? There's one of those. The cylinder red ones, there's one, two, three of those, I think. Uh, what else is there? Oh, the, the poof yellow ones with that <laughs> one two there's three of those yeah I don't think it's just counting them and then the three circles there's one two three four five of those did I count that right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen 
9, 10, 19. Yes, okay. So we have to remove these seven. So remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remove those seven. I'm going to take my cubes. Let's get some cubes here. All right, I know. I'm just going to put cubes on all of these. <laughs> and then see if it like, if I remove it, if it looks like a number. As I was trying to do it, like, removing, like just imagining it, but I'm not very good at that. <laughs> okay, so if I remove these seven, so one, two, three, and then we'll remove that one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, does that look like anything? Um, well, I'm just removing all of them that have that, but I don't know. Does that look like a number? It looks kind of like a three, but I feel like they're all going to look like threes. Okay, let's try it. Number two is removing this one as well, and this one, this one, and that one. See, that also looks like a three. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem right. And what's the last one? If I remove this one, this one, this one, this one. How many of these are there? One, two, three, and this one. Oh, cool. Well, that one looks like a four. <laughs> so maybe, okay. So maybe it is a four. Oh, the second one looks like a nine. Okay, I thought it looked like a three. Okay, <laughs> wait, let's. Okay, wait. So the first one looks kind of like a three. And the second one you said looked like a nine. Wait, I want to look at it again. So if it was not those ones, it did have these ones, it did not have that. Did have these, right? It looks like a three. Looks like a duck to me. <laughs> I realize I probably should have used a different color than yellow because it's hard to see the yellow on the background. Cause like this this one isn't there. Okay, well I can try both three three four and three nine four and see what happens. So I'll try three nine four. Um, three nine four is not it. It's got a little X on it, so I'll try three three four. That is also an X. Okay. So maybe it's not that. Um, let me get a better color. <laughs> All right. Must be removed, it says. So I did remove them. Um, let's get a different color. How about I just cover up the ones that need to be removed and then we can see the other lanterns, right? Is that easier? Okay, so these other lanterns, what does it look like? <laughs> Is that anything? Dun. Maybe the first one's not a three, and it's a seven. 
That looks worse on camera. Oh, it does? Um, in the classic exit titles, you had to look through cards to know if the code is correct. I appreciate the wheel tells you if you're wrong now. Yeah. Yeah, so like looking at the back of the X is nice. And the hints are all in a book instead of cards as well. So there's a book of hints. Okay, what about 734? Maybe it's a 7? The hard part... Nope. Is it 794? No, that's black. Okay. Nope. Um, and this looks worse on camera, you said, so... Well, so this one I was trying to cover it up so that you only see the lanterns still and not the ones that I took away, which is why I used the, the gray. But I don't know. Um, hmm. Do you think it's time for a hint for this one? It must be removed. I wonder if these letters have anything to do with it, or if that's for later. Because it wants—it seems like it wants us to focus on the the lanterns now. But like, yeah, if, if it is what we're trying to do, and we just like can't see the number, then then that kind of sucks. <laughs> Um, you don't think we're functionally doing it wrong. So, okay. So then, I think, like, if you look up a hint and you don't learn anything new, then it doesn't count as using it. That's what it says. So I think maybe we could look up a hint and see. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll do that. Um, we are on yellow, little temple. So I go to page seven. Um, do, do, do. yes, okay. So the first clue, it says what we're doing. <laughs> so I'll read the second clue. Um, oh. Dang it, I keep forgetting. This is a puzzle. <laughs> so far, all of the hints I've used had to do with it being a puzzle. So it says... Remove the puzzle pieces with the lanterns. Hmm. Not just the, okay, so. And it's, does that mean like every? Okay, so if we take off this, then maybe like the negative will show so this, this, okay there. So that's like a seven, right? Um, you were thinking about that, but no piece contained three lanterns. Yeah. So, but, but I think it's like all of the puzzle pieces that contain either of these have to be removed. So I think the first one's a seven, um, and then the second one is either these, like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, um, this one. Four. We were so close, I think. We had the idea, but we did it just like, we're mo removing the physical lanterns instead of the puzzle. Which, so, the, so in this one, like the puzzle kind of takes it out of the immersion of the escape room because like, well, I don't know. Because I guess now we are actually physically removing the, the lanterns, <laughs> but it's not what it would look like if you physically removed the lanterns, right?
And I think this one's three, but let's double check. Uh, yep, three. It should come out the same when you place cubes on the pieces. Well, no, the problem is like the cubes show up. Um, there's multiple lanterns, so like I'm taking this piece off, but it only has this. Like this for number three, it has this and this, whereas it's only saying to remove this one. So when I did the cubes, like this was still there, but when I take off the puzzle piece, the whole thing is gone. So. Yeah. Okay, yep. And so that's moon star L, which is here. Fantastic, you managed to open the yellow lock on the little temple. Yay, the room is awfully small. Even just two people could hardly manage to squeeze in here. Before you stands an old altar, but the treasure hunters seem to have beaten you here too. Several historically significant bowls have been broken in their raid. As you leave the little temple, you notice an inconspicuous, in the conspicuous journal lying on the floor with a pink lock on it. Does it belong to the treasure hunters? Or maybe the professor himself? That's here. Um... You pick up the old journal and notice a small drawing sticking out from between the pages. It seems to be loose. You carefully pull it out. On the drawing, you see several crates stacked on top of each other. Oh, those are these things. As you eagerly examine the crates, you notice the letters. That's the professor's handwriting. Losing no time, you get right to work. Okay, so... Oh, these are numbers, so there's six. Okay. So then it's, it's saying to go down from here, I guess. So let me try writing that out. So that's a F A. And then five on the third column is X, M, I. Four on the second column. Min, us. <laughs> Three on the fourth column. T, E, L. That doesn't seem to be reading anything. <laughs> Two on the third column. E, P, H, and the one on the last column, O, and E. Fax minus de pet hon. Uh, um. Oh, remove the pieces. That's a good idea. Oh, but there's like. For this one, they don't have... Some of them are like broken. So it's five. Oh wait, it's six. Six is for six, like that. Five is like this. <laughs> Quick check your fax machine. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, okay, wait, let's put it, I guess, like this. Okay, so six is like this. Five is here. Uh, four is here, I think. Three is here. Two is here and one is here. Fax me a still hone. That doesn't seem to be right. Maybe I don't read from up there. And the other things that stand out in this puzzle are like, there's a green and a yellow lizard here. I don't know what those mean. Um, the 
there's one at the end? Oh, one. One. Okay, so fa. <laughs> Do we see any other letters? I mean numbers? I don't see any other numbers. No. Fax minus tell tell telephone. Wait, fax minus telephone. No, oh, that that is what it says. Fax minus telephone. Pack. Fax. What's fax minus telephone? Printer? Okay, printer. Printer and paper. Does the box have their contact? Oh, it does say box, doesn't it? Um, fax. Cosmos contact, but minus fax minus telephone would be not the. Okay, here it says oh fax. Ah, ah here, there's a, okay. This is great. So there's box here, and then it has fax and telephone. So I have to do some math here, right? So fax is four nine zero. Oh okay, I don't have to do much math. <laughs> So, so both telephone and fax start with the same plus four nine zero seven one one two one nine one. Fax is one nine nine and telephone is zero zero zero. So it's one nine nine. Um, um, good job. And so I, I didn't actually need to take these apart. I'm gonna put this back. Shoot, where does this go? <laughs> mm -hmm. Why is this up here? Okay, one nine nine, and this was pink, right? Pink. And yes, that's pink. So, uh, the hexagon square moon, which is this one. Yay! Yes, they they have used the trick. Wait, they used the fax one before. <laughs> I don't remember doing facts before. I've done other stuff. I don't remember. <laughs> what a chore. Your backs are aching from lifting and carrying all those crates. But the code really does open. You didn't actually have to carry them. You can just like read. Maybe, oh, maybe we didn't bring a notebook to be able to write down the paper. Um, the code really does open the lock on the journal. As you open the journal, you can see immediately that it belongs to the professor. With furrowed brows, you flip through a few pages. So he really was kidnapped, but he did his best to leave you clues on his way to the temple, always aware of the danger of being discovered, but also in the hope that you would follow him and solve the riddles. Then his entry suddenly breaks off. A few pages later, you find a pretty lousy poem about a fire. Was the professor losing his mind, or is one final clue about how to crack the orange lock at the temple entrance? Or is it one final clue? Okay, now take the orange fire strip. So we have this thing. Yeah, yeah, I remember the barcode. Spoiler. <laughs> um, all right, so this is the poem. Oh, and then in this picture, it's got two lizards on each thing, which we don't have here. Because there's only one. Okay. In a circle of stone, there's a fire burning in the shape of an arch. Now you're learning. Four salamanders there are to see that will not agree in the fire to flee. Um, insert the fire into the cracks and then it stands with bended back. Look into the flames that flicker. You'll get the answer even quicker. From left and right, above and below, view both sides, give it a go. From large to small, you're in the zone. Now open up the gate of stone. Okay, so I think we had to like go like this or something. Um... Do, right? Does this fit in this crack like that? OK. 
because um, this they're right next to each other like this. It's hard for you to see right now. Oh gosh, my focus left. Okay, but I will take a picture of this and put it in the Discord. Um. Okay, and then we're supposed to like, so you can see how cool it is. Also, we're at one minute ten, or one hour ten minutes. Look at this. This is cool. Oh, actually, I'll take a couple pictures. Boop. <laughs> okay, um, wait, so insert the fire into the cracks and then it stands with bended back look into the flames that flicker. You'll get the answer even quicker. Are we supposed to just look from above or look from here inside? Oh gosh. I'm not sure. Oh, there's like from this side, it looks different. Like from this side, in this angle, you could see like kind of, it might depend on the angle. <sighs> hmm. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm gonna send you some pictures in Discord. This is like a 3D puzzle, so, so. <laughs> Those pictures might not help. <laughs> Do the lines on the front and back? That's what I'm wondering. So like... Okay, look into the flames that flicker. And I think... Did I get it in all the way? Okay. So like, there's, there's lines in the inside, yeah. And then, like... <laughs> I'm so bad at these, like, hidden number things. Okay, so here it looks like there's a curve, so I'm gonna like... Okay, yeah, so there's a five. Okay, I'm gonna... Um, so, here, I'm gonna take a picture again of this. Nope, that's not... Okay, it's hard to get this, this angle in the picture. Okay. Uh-oh. All right. So, I'm sending this in the Discord, and it looks like a five. Wait, come on. Whoa, did, did that work? Was that the right picture? <laughs> okay. So, like, looking from that angle, it looks like a five. Um, and then there's a plus down at the bottom. And then, let's see what else is there. I'm, I'm looking at the things on the inside because uh, that looks better. So then from here, there's a... <laughs> so like, there's a two. And then... Oh, what about on the top? No. That was a five, right? Five. Oh my gosh. Okay, so from left and right, above and below, view both sides, give it a go. From large to small, you're in the zone. Okay, so there was a five, there was a two. Um, So the two used this and that, and then, um, it's a five. Oh, maybe there's a four. Oh, oh gosh. Is that a four? <laughs> so question. Is, yeah, left, right, above, and below is four angles. All right, but let me give you a picture of this, this angle here. <laughs> Let's see. Where, where did it go? Oh, it's from over here. Okay, come on, camera. Look at the angle that I was looking at. Oh, there it is, okay. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> people are in the Discord that aren't on stream are going to be like, what are you doing? Um, okay. That looks like a four. I also probably should have spoiler marked these. Whoops. But um, that looks like a four. <laughs> right? And, but then also says, from left to right, above and below, view both sides, give it a go. From large to small, you're in the zone. Because I only need three numbers, I think. Unless, unless there's like something else. So, so I, think, I think five, two, and four, hopefully is, is uh, let's try that. Um, so large to small, five, four, two, right? Uh, which one was this? Orange lock, orange lock at the temple entrance. Okay, five, four, two, let's try that and see. Um, left to right is one number. Left and right, above and below. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's just saying like, look, look from all sides instead of like literally one on left, one on right. So that seems like it might've worked. So it's Y, Y, it's this, it gives this code. Yes, we did it. All right, perfect. The gate opens as you climb the weather-worn steps of stone and enter the temple's interior. The first thing you notice is how wonderfully cool it is inside. The second thing you notice is a revolting odor and the whooping of monkeys. What's going on here? You follow the noise and reach a large hall. Wow, the other puzzle escape room game I did had monkeys too. <laughs> Take the puzzle bag containing these pieces, stars on the back. This is the last puzzle. Complete the picture, then continue reading. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over here as well. We got the puzzles done. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, don't. Let's not drop anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a lot better um, on the now than I was doing yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I just got stuck and that was that was not great. Apparently it's important to have monkeys in jigsaw puzzle escape rooms. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's a thing. If I ever make a jigsaw puzzle escape room, I guess I'll have to keep that in mind. Need monkeys. This one looks more monochrome color than the last one. <laughs> so it might be a little harder again. Here's the monkeys. Oops, some monkeys. There's a few monkeys. Oh, a lot of monkeys, huh? There, okay.
So if I finish this today, then tomorrow I'm going to start a different jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> That's not an escape room. I don't have another escape room one. was missing that. That goes there, huh? Wait a minute. Did I put that upside down? <laughs> does this go? Oh, does this go like this? Hmm. Wait, are these monkeys like sideways? What? How are these monkeys? Wait a minute, what? Did I do this the wrong way? I did do it the wrong way. <laughs> no wonder. Um, maybe it's a portrait puzzle, maybe. Or maybe I have it upside down. Maybe it is a portrait puzzle. No, wait, no, no, because they're, okay. These are feet. These are their feet. So they're just like in the trees, right? Um, hi, Time Roller. Thanks for the hydrate. Maybe? Oh, but then no, these ones are... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see after I put more together what it looks like. Because this, this is a number one, and that's reading that way up. So I feel like we might want this way to be up because of these numbers. But I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> the numbers, like are very jarring compared to the art of the puzzle. It's like this big eight <laughs> just sticking out. This one, I don't know which way is up for that one. There's all these numbers. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, here's some bright stuff somewhere. More bright stuff. Um, And there's these firefly things over here. Hmm. There. Bye, Salty Horse. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, I'm not sure how much longer the stream will be because I don't know when my kids will wake up. Um, <laughs> it's a race against the clock here in more ways than just the Escape room game. What is this? This is like a big owl. <laughs> All right, this what goes there? Let's go somewhere around there. I don't know. Um, does the chat you're looking at not show the channel? Oh, I, I, I did write hydrate. I can hydrate again though. I'll hydrate again. this go? <laughs> so this one so far is the hardest of the puzzle parts I think even though they're all the same 
cut. So I could be looking at the cut to see what is where the things go, but um, trying not to do that. moss stuff over here. I guess that goes with that. But I don't know. <laughs> How that, where that connects up to stuff here. Oh, maybe it's here like this. Aha! Boom. This goes there. Yay! Does this go there? Yep. Let's go here. Aha. Like. Whoops. Um, does escape puzzle have lots of puzzles? Yeah, this is uh, four four puzzles. Four 88 piece puzzles. And I'm on the last one. Um, yeah, and in, in each puzzle, it has, it's had like multiple of the escape room type puzzles. What, what are those called? Riddles inside them, which is neat. But like, yeah, so this booklet will have after I finish the puzzle, I'm supposed to read the rest of it, and then it'll have a puzzle for one of the locks to do, and then there's more booklets to open with more puzzles. Oh, <laughs> there's that piece. Got it. All right. So, lots of numbers everywhere. Oh, that's not an owl, that's a monkey. <laughs> of course it's a monkey. <laughs> As you look around, you notice a valuable looking chest secured with a large brown lock and gold pieces scattered around it. Oh, those are the gold pieces. The treasure from the little temple. Just as you run the few paces to the chest, you suddenly hear a familiar voice coming from the ceiling of the hall, reciting a poem in a half-sung cadence. 
Monkeys jumping to and fro, restoring order as they go. They don't like leaving things half done and want things proper, every one. Bring their heads and tails together and make them whole. Now that's much better. Then you'll save yourselves indeed by bringing forth the code you need. You look up. It's the professor. He has been captured. That's him, I guess. To his left, you see the treasure hunters. They all seem to have been caught in a kind of snare. One of the treasure hunters is bellowing something unintelligible at the professor, something decidedly unfriendly in any case. But he is not the only one you need to pay attention to. You have to concentrate on saving the professor. If you also get caught in the snare here in the middle of nowhere, you will surely all be lost. All right. So um, you have to connect the monkey head to the tails. Right? They don't like leaving things... It's proper to bring their heads and tails together and make them whole. Now that's much better. So, okay, I, I I think this is one where I have to like physically take them apart again, because let's see if I take these monkeys. And put their heads over here, right? There, ha! Now that's much better. Um, okay, so what does this say? Is that like a, a five? <laughs> Do I need to... Do it like this way, or, or maybe this the other way. Roman numeral. It's a one V V I. Is it six? But then, wait, how am I? Sorry. Yeah, one five six. So, so we think it is that way, but okay. But then that would have been upside down if I put them over here. So if it's like that, huh? I guess that's, uh, yeah, I'll try that. Okay, one, five, six. Um, brown, brown, brown is this one. One, five, six. Um, yeah, that is brown, so Y, diamond, Star is this one. Yay! Ten. The brown lock on the chest opens with a soft click. For a moment, you stop and listen. Nothing in particular happens. The monkeys jabber as usual. The professor bursts out in joyful laughter. The treasure hunters beg and plead for you to free them from, your, from their unfortunate situation. Unwilling to be cajoled, you cautiously open the chest. You are hoping to find clues about how to open the door that you are guessing might have the treasure chamber behind it. You don't know much about the door except that there is a gigantic statue keeping watch in front of it with a light blue lock. The statue looks familiar to you. You seem to have seen it somewhere. Anyway, you peer inside the chest and find a valuable piece of jewelry. It looks like a snake with strange holes in it, including a ruby red circle embedded in its head. Bizarre, but a vague sensation tells you that the snake might be useful for finding the code. Take this strange item. So there's this strange item. Um. <laughs> All right. So... Let's see, um, wait, so it says I've seen that somewhere before? So there's a lot of symbols in here. I don't know if this does cover up all the numbers or like... <laughs> Okay, um, the statue looks familiar to you. You seem to have seen it somewhere. So this statue, have we seen it somewhere? We've seen it here on the, on the front of the cover. <laughs> the red mark matches the red mark in the snake head. Oh, this red, oh, here. So we like rotate. How do I know which way to do? Oh, <laughs> that's how. 
<laughs> okay. Um, all right, so if I go like, but I'm not sure exactly how to put the snake, and I just lost the rotate, okay. But it does seem like, look, oh, like, look, 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 oh, oh, wait. It's got, it is on the cover. Cause, okay, is there a better lighting picture of this one or no? I don't think so, okay. So on the cover it has a sash, I don't know if you can see, but the sash has these symbols on it, which I think might match some of these symbols over here. So like the first symbol is a spoke wheel, which looks like this one. So if I get this um, and then there, eight, eight. And then the second symbol is a snowflake. Snowflake, is it that one? It's hard to see. Yeah, I think it's that one, okay. So, do, do, do. so I think that gets the snowflake and then there's a six. And then the third symbol <laughs> is Squiggly lines. <laughs> uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. It's hard to see because it's so dark. Um, oh, sorry, Salty Horse. I have links turned off. Um, it's a four. But yes, you can search on BGG this game and, and then you could probably find it. So light blue lock 864. 864. Let's try that. Yes. Okay, so L square diamond. That's this one. Oh, it's um. I don't know that symbol. Okay. But yes, it was that symbol. 11. You can't believe your luck. The code opens the lock on the statue. You did it, but your jubilation is short-lived. A mighty crash strikes the monkey's dumb. Oh no, a loud clattering ensues, and then the statue slides to the side with a grinding noise. Then all is quiet as a mouse. Behind the statue, a small, almost completely unadorned room comes to light. Within the room is an old altar with an oddly well-preserved clay jug on it. Is that supposed to be the treasure? In disbelief, you search the walls for a hidden door. Nothing. Then your gaze returns to the jug. It somehow seems to be drawing you to it. You look inside and discover a strange liquid. Actually, you do feel pretty thirsty. <laughs> Why would you drink a strange liquid? Okay. Um, actually, uh, just as you are about to reach for the jug, you hear the professor calling you from outside. Right, the professor. You run outside to finally free him from his predicament. After a bit of back and forth, you free the treasure hunters as well, who are so grateful that they willingly allow themselves to be handcuffed. All of a sudden, you feel the ground lurch beneath you. In an earthquake, giant boulders fall from the ceiling and take the golden treasure chest with them as they slide into the depths. And you realize that enough is enough. You have to get out immediately. Then you think of the odd jug. You can't just leave it, can you? What do you want to do? Flee without the jug? Congratulations, you succeed in escaping from the collapsing temple and deliver the scoundrel to the police. You may stop the timer. On page 7 of the rulebook, under the assessment heading, you can see how well you did. If, on the other hand, you think you still have time to save the jug, take the last riddle document with the symbols... Um, with, with, this is the last riddle document left. So do, do you think we have time to save the jug? <laughs> um, also thanks for the hot, uh, hydrate, salty horse. Also the om symbolizes the universe and the ultimate reality is the most important Hindu symbols. The dawn of creation from emptiness first emerged a syllable consisting of three letters, A-U-M. Okay. Um, the text says you were thirsty. Yes. Yes, it did. Thank you. Um, yeah, so do, do we want to open this and try to get the jug? Do we care about the stars? We already said we don't care about the stars, right? So yeah, okay, let, let's take it. Let's take it. 12, you dive frantically back into the room as, as someone is waking up. Whoops. 
<laughs> Boulders are still falling from the ceiling. The thick dust is making it hard to breathe. No sooner do you reach for the jug than another earthquake makes the room shudder. We have to get out of here is your only thought. A few days later, your sensational discovery of the hidden temple has landed you on the front page of a well-known newspaper. Congratulations, you are now famous as the up-and-coming archaeologist. Thank you to your successful efforts to stop the theft of cultural artifacts. You delivered the strange jug, whose contents you spilled while escaping, to a local museum that expressed an interest in it. Congratulations, you have done it. You can now stop the timer and look at page 7 of the rule book to see how well you did. Okay, so that was one hour and 44 minutes. Um, so, uh, overall, whoops, I did a uh, 162 minutes about. Um, but yeah, since I Sensational design your own group photo here. Oh, okay, so this is just a group photo opportunity and it took some extra time, whatever. <laughs> and you can cut out hats and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so pa page seven of the rule book. How did we do? We used two hints, right? And it was greater than 150 but less than 180, so we got six stars. Yay! Six stars. Um, yeah, so I think like the main, there's no, there's no final puzzle. It was just extra story. <laughs> yeah, so this was the, it, you get to design your, your group photo, cut out these things. <laughs> kind of silly. Yay, so that was um, Exit the Game, the Sacred Temple. Uh, yeah, that's what it's called, right? It might be called Exit the Game with Puzzle the Sacred Temple or something like that. Um, but yeah, that was fun. So I think the main thing that was like not replayable it, the only two things that were not replayable other than the group photo at the end was this tracing paper which you could probably erase and then this thing which cut open which arts and crafts um and really probably i mean i could probably give this to someone else to do and they would still get most of the experience if i erase this because like the cutting of this isn't really a puzzle it's just arts and crafts um so yeah it's it's almost replayable i think um but yeah that was that was cool that was and they're all the same die cut i think yeah so you could put these you could mix it all up <laughs> but that's why they have the different backs it's very important um, you can get new tracing paper or baking paper. That's true, yes, but they'd, it started with these symbols on it, so you would have to like redraw the symbols on it, which is doable. But Yay, yeah, so that was fun. I liked that. I thought... It was cool how the puzzles were actually, it was more than just jigsaw puzzle, because some of the puzzles had, had to actually do with the jigsaw puzzles. Um, that was cool. Um, how does it compare to the standard exit games? Uh, I liked it. I think it was similar. It was longer, definitely. So I don't know, because I, I really like the normal exit games too. Um, yeah, I like I like this system of not using the cards though. That's really nice because the cards in the normal exit game are kind of annoying to flip through to get to like because you have to do the flipping to the answer and then um, finding the image and then going to that number. Uh, whereas this one, 
like the, the little X and then having the, the little code thing. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, and having a, a big deck of the cards for, for hints is also wasteful. Agreed. So like having the hints in the rule book, that just makes sense. Um, so I like that. I like jigsaw puzzles, so I thought that added to it. Um, but, but then also, it means that my husband didn't want to do it with me <laughs> because he doesn't like jigsaw puzzles. And usually with exit games, we play two player together. So like I like doing them two player with him. So then this one is just not doing two player, which is still fun because then I get to see everything. But it takes longer when it's solo versus multiple people, I think. Um, but yeah, I think a similar feeling, like the, the puzzle parts, the story, it felt more in-depth story. So maybe more like, like how Catacombs of Horror was a in-depth story and that was like a bigger box exit game. So more like that because it was long like it and had more puzzles, I think. Well, I, how many, it had 12, 11, maybe 11 puzzles. So I guess that's similar to normal ones, huh? It's just the jigsaw puzzle made it take longer. Um, yeah, you're in a room, you're in a new room, yeah. So there was like a whole journey with it. Whereas normally in the exit games, it's just like the booklet, you open up the booklet and you're there. So, yeah. Definitely one for if you like jigsaw puzzles and exit games, um, which is what I like. I really liked it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does, the, like they could have just made it not, they could have made it reusable, I think. Or, well, th this part was, you kind of needed the tracing paper. But most of the puzzles part were reusable, so. Maybe I can, I can have someone else do it. But yeah, I'm gonna take these apart and put them in their separate baggies first and stuff. This one was cool. <laughs> Except it was hard for me to see the numbers, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure which, which my favorite puzzle was. Did, it, did any of you have a favorite puzzle? Um, and then finally on the last puzzle, I, I didn't need a hint on the taking out the puzzle piece things. <laughs> like the, those were the two hints I used up, is like taking out, physically taking out the pieces instead of like drawing lines or something, which is, makes sense because like that's what you can do with a puzzle. Um, butterflies was nice with the tracing paper looks cool. Um, oh yeah, so for the tracing paper it was like um, here it had hand then or it had hand these symbols <laughs> so then the hand I, I lined it up with the hand here and then here it has like a little picture of a pencil and the swords so like I, there's these swords here, so I traced the swords when I lined up the hand here. And then for this one, I lined it up here and traced the bones, which are here. So then like that added on to the pictures. And then this one was the little statues. So then that added on to the pictures there. And so then it ended up showing a number of all of them. So that was, that was the first puzzle, I think. Yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, and then the butterfly one was hard because I didn't think to take out the puzzle pieces. And then... <laughs> Same with the lanterns. <laughs> didn't think about taking out the puzzle pieces. Now, that one kind of like, with the immersion, made it... Because uh... like taking out just those lanterns, the pieces took out other lanterns other than just those lanterns. Whereas with the butterflies, they were all on individual pieces. So that made more sense, taking out the pieces. Yeah, so 
that was Exit the Game Sacred Temple. Um, they also have another one that I'm probably going to order at some point <laughs> because I want to do it. Um, yeah, and I'm excited for Jigsaw Puzzles. I don't know like how many, like how it seems difficult to actually make this with a Jigsaw Puzzle too. Um, yeah, the benefit of this version is they can have a bigger images compared to the regular exit box. Yeah, is it? Yeah, I guess this is, it's not that much bigger, is it? Like, because normally they have the booklet and then it's like double-sided, double page, they can have a double page image. But the booklet's smaller than this, so I don't know, like, maybe the image is like this big usually. Okay, so it is a little bigger. But then they have to make sure the images are clear. Well, they do that anyway. But sometimes the problem with puzzle images is that um, if the if there's an image on the crease or the edge, then you have to make sure it's like not messed up by the edge. Um, oh, Nobari hasn't done a physical exit game yet. The one you have is still in shrink. Oh, okay. I've done a bunch of them. So like they all vary. Uh, you have the Egyptian tomb and shrink. I'm not. I don't remember which one that is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's. There are a lot. So some of them I like more than others. Um, but yeah, there. I like them. I like the puzzles in a, a lot of them. Third one supposedly difficult. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did that like a long time ago because I did them the year they came out. For most of them, I'm a little behind now, so like we're on the ones that came out last year. <sighs> but we, we need to do some. We have a couple and then we're gonna order more when we finish those. <laughs> we like escape rooms. 